Good evening and thanks for watching CTV Sports. It's been eight weeks since we last took the air and a lot has happened since. We last reported of rumors of Jim McElwain entertaining thoughts of leaving CSU and of a hot volleyball team preparing to host the early rounds of the NCAA tournament. Now volleyball season is well over with the Rams notching a sweet 16 berth after a thrilling win over the Buffs. Mac went south for the winter with no intention of coming back and Georgia offensive coordinator Mike Bobo was brought in to coach the Rams. That was just days after Utah absolutely ravaged the Dave Baldwin-led team in the Las Vegas Bowl. In case you missed it, here's the only CSU highlight our research team could dig up of the game. Fortunately, the disappointing end of the football season was quickly forgotten as the men's basketball team got off to its best start in team history. Larry Eustacey's Rams went 14-0, just squeezing into the rankings before dropping consecutive games to start the new year. But then the Rams had a gut check, or rather a kidney check in Air Force, and got back on track, now boasting an 18-2 record, as they stand tied for second in the Mountain West and ranked 24th in the country. The women's team got off to a bit of a slower start, but have won their last six games and 10 of their last 11. That's good enough to notch them a second place standing in the conference as well. We'll break it all down for you coming up on CTV Sports. Good evening and thanks for watching CTV Sports. I'm Patrick Henslow. And I'm Travis Green. Patty, it's been one busy winter with a lot of changing. Unfortunately, though, I still haven't grown anymore. Trav, I got your back. No ah, worries. Thanks, man. Saturday, Saturday night marked the first men's home game since classes started up. Again, and it's fair to say that CSU students didn't miss basketball. A sellout crowd of more than 8,700 fans piled into the whale as the Rams took on conference frontrunner San Diego State. This was J.J. Avila's first home game after being suspended for a skirmish at Air Force earlier this month. And he seemed happy to be back. Avila and the whole team came out white hot for the whiteout, jumped out to a 25-10 lead, and the Rams never looked back. The Aztecs did pull within one late in the second half, but CSU closed it out with a 79-73 victory. Trav, what's more surprising, the fact that the Rams got this win or the student section didn't rush the court? <laughs> I'm going to have to go student section. I mean, this student section has been fired up all year with good reasoning because all the athletics have been on fire this year. A big basket by Avila at the very end. It was intense there. I'm really surprised the fans didn't storm the court. Maybe we're starting to expect victories here in CSU because it's been happening all season. Yeah, McElwain taught him well in uh, football season. But, hey, I'll be the bad guy here. I didn't know they were going to play this well in this basketball game. They were favored in Vegas by two, but I thought San Diego State would pull this one out. But they came out red hot shooting six of six, and they really just never looked back. Trev. They got things going, and you got to talk about that leader, J.J. Avila. 29 points in this game, named Mountain West Player of the Week with three rebounds, two assists. Avila has been getting the job done all season long. He seems to be that go-to guy that the Rams can go to anytime they need a basket. Yeah, 12 to 16. I loved his shot selection out there, and I really felt he led the way. Good tempo. They all looked calm out there, and they looked like they were in the lead. They really had the tempo, and it was just great to see out there. Pope for SDSU, though, he did have a good game. He did, and that San Diego State team is a really rough team. I was with you. I didn't expect this team to get the victory. San Diego State has looked great all season, but the Rams went out there, played one of the best games I've seen them play all year. Like you said, the hot start, and let's talk about the bench play. Gian Clavel and John Gillen have been huge for this basketball team. That presence off the bench to go out there and get points, and how about Gillen? He's that spark plug you can stick out there, and he brings a lot of energy defensively and offensively. And like you said, he really gives them a shot in the arm, which is great to see. And this SDSU team is one of the top defenses in the Mountain West, and CSU went out there, and they put a lot of points on the board, and it was great to see, and their field goal percentage was great. And the next matchup against Boise State is going to be a tough one coming up. Derek Marks, over the last six games, is averaging over 25 points per game. Talks about him being the Mountain West Player of the Year because of the hot start he's been off here in the last couple games, and it's going to be a tough matchup defensively for the Rams coming up here against Boise. 
Yeah, definitely on the road. And Clavel and Gillian, they'll need big games out of them. And obviously from the big three, we have Daniel Bejarano, Stan Kidd, and Avila. If they can put up big numbers, because those games they did lose when they went to like New Mexico, stuff like that, only one of those guys would get double-digit points. So if they can get two of those guys to get double-digit points, put some points on the board, get some help from the bench, they should be good out there. And I think this team has really caught their stride of recently. They had a pretty cupcake schedule. We thought CU was a tough matchup, but now CU is having a rough time this year, barely in the top 100 for RPI. And now CSU gets that loss against New Mexico at the pit. I mean, it's the pit. It's a tough place to play. And then they get the loss against Wyoming here. It seems like they've really caught stride with all these transfer players, and they're really getting rolling here. It's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see if they can get that win against Boise. And then Fresno State. That Fresno yeah. State team is deep with guard play. Three guards averaging over 12 points per game. They're really going to have to lock down on them and find ways to get baskets. Yep. Three big road games. We have Fresno State, Wyoming, and SDSU. All very tough games. And I don't, I don't know if they're really winnable games, but we'll see. And it is, but it's great to see this team playing well. Absolutely. And for just about every CSU football player, the season has been over for more than a month. But for quarterback Garrett Grayson and offensive tackle Ty Sambrello, a new season has begun in their preparation for the NFL draft. On Saturday, the two seniors set out to impress NFL scouts in the 2015 Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Grayson, CSU's football all-time leading passer, finished the game 8 of 15 for 118 yards through the air, and Ty Sambrello continued to impress scouts. Now, Patrick, these two, there's been raves about them, about how they're going to go possibly first round, second round. Which one of these Rams do you think is going to come off the board first? I got to go with Sam Brelo. I mean, it's always tough for quarterbacks to go top, and these past few years have been we saw in 13 and 14 very heavy quarterback driven drafts so that's uh, maybe a setback for Grayson but we'll see and we'll also see how Grayson is in the combine because that'll be big for him as well. There's a lot of stock put into the NFL combine and I think that hurts Garrett Grayson's opportunity to jump up in that first round because he's not one of those guys he's going to outrun you or out uh, lift you with mm -hmm. weight wise He's just the guy that, as Coach McElwain liked to say, he did his job, and he did his job really well. And I think any team that gets him will be lucky because he is a great pr preparation for games. He's always ready for the upcoming game. But I think Ty Sambrello will definitely be the first Ram to go, possibly first round. Yeah, should be some exciting stuff. And they're still a long ways away before the draft, so there will be lots of speculation, lots of talk, and stuff always seems to change. So we'll keep, our, we'll keep our eyes on that and keep tuned in. We'll have all your coverage. We will. And up next, women's basketball. Don't go away. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. As the Fort Collins temperatures continue to rise, so does the play of CSU women's basketball. The Rams whooped up on San Diego State 49 to 36 on the road this Saturday, making for six straight for this for the Lady Rams. CSU mounted an 11 point lead in the first half before the Aztec cut it to within four. The second half was all Rams leading by as much as 16. The Rams were able to convert 19 turnovers into 15 points. Grit Ryder led the way with 13 points while Elin Gustafson had 12 for CSU. The second place Rams head back to Moby this Wednesday in a crucial conference match against third place Boise State. Trav, six straight for this women's team and uh, hey, they're rolling. They are rolling, and I think mm -hmm. a key player to this women's basketball team getting things going has been Jamie Patrick. Not a player we talked about a lot in preseason. She has really emerged as one of the better players on this team. 9.7 points per game. She's hit 36 three-pointers and only 12 turnovers. That's really impressive. She's holding on to the ball, and she's taking smart shots. Yeah, she's got an even better last name. <laughs> but I'm going to go with Ryan Williams. Early in the season, he said they had setbacks with injuries. Now they're really bouncing back, and they're catching their stride, and they're looking like the team we expected them to be. And we expected them to be a tournament team. Obviously, they fell a little short last year. They come stumbling out of the gate this year, but now they're finally picking it up. 
And this Boise State game will be crucial because if they lose this game, they will drop to third place in the Mountain West. But it is at home, and I expect this Rams team to come out and play well. And I think I think they can beat this Boise State team at home. I definitely think they can also. And when you touch on the injuries, A.J. Newton was a big loss for this women's basketball team going down. She was one of those leaders. And now Grit Ryder had to take over as that senior leader, and she has done a fantastic job leading the teams in points per game. And you got to talk about Ellen Nystrom and Elon Gustafsson. These two sophomores have really stepped up big for this team and really done a great job at getting this team rolling. And it's, gonna, it's like the men's team. They could catch fire here. Yeah, and it's great to see. And I think they're both going to make runs down the stretch. So it'll be fun to watch. Well, coming up, we'll break down all the numbers for you in our own segment called By the Numbers. Don't go away. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I've made it. Welcome back. Let's get going with a game we call By, By the, the Numbers. Numbers. We're going to break down some statistics of the men's basketball team. We'll start with the number 70. 70 seems to be the magic number for the Rams in conference play. CSU is 5-0 in games when scoring 70 or more, and 0-2 oh and when failing to score 70. Patrick, 70 to get the win, apparently, for this CSU basketball team. Yeah, it's a funny thing to watch, and they've scored some high numbers, playing Air Force, scoring 98 points and as we alluded to before putting up big numbers over 70 points against San Diego State and that stifling defense so offense definitely a staple this year absolutely offensively this team seems to when they get off to that hot start like we saw against San Diego State and we saw against Air Force if they get things going early on they're the type of team that I think they can hold off these teams defensively because they've played great defense this season for sure Trav our next number is 27 this is the RPI of San Diego State after its loss to CSU on Saturday. This was the only game when the men have played against a top 50 RPI team, and the victory should be looked upon favorably come tournament time, Trav. Absolutely. Fox Sports came out with an early preseason prediction of the March Madness bracket, and they had CSU at 11. you got to think voters are now looking at CSU higher than 11 after that impressive win, and definitely if they keep things rolling here. Oh, yeah, Trav doing your studying. <laughs> and I think they have three big road games, as I've talked about before. If they get one of those, I definitely think that will up their stock because winning on the road in the Mountain West is difficult. Our next number is 4,288. This is the number of Diet Cokes Larry <laughs> Stacy drinks in a week. Only joking. This is the average attendance for CSU men's home games this year, ahead of only San Jose State, Air Force, and Boise State in conference. Patrick, we did have that big winter break. There's a lot of out-of-state students here mm -hmm. in Colorado. But come on, we got to get more people packing Moby. Yeah, I can, I can defend some of those out-of-state students. I am one myself. You know, it's tough to get here when you're out-of-state and you're off for four weeks. But hey, and we talked about a little lighter schedule before, so there's not really grabbing fans' attention. But I think this 18-2 and two start that they're at right now, I think that'll definitely put some uh, high knees in those seats. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to touch on football in Colorado is taking a big change. Oh, Denver yeah. Broncos, Gary Kubiak, now the head coach. And here at CSU, Mike Bobo, two new head coaches for some quality football teams. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch. Bobo, old offensive coordinator at Georgia. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see, and uh, it was kind of a bummer to see the CSU football team end like they did. And same for the Broncos. I thought Twitter was going to blow up there for a sec on Peyton Manning, as uh, everybody was saying, all sorts of stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, you got to think people are happy about Gary Kubiak, CSU kids coming, he come, came to CSU, mm -hmm. so, you know, the Ram fans are happy. That's all the time we have for you tonight. But thanks for being punctual and catching <laughs> our first show back. Remember, if you aren't near a TV, you can still catch our live stream on shows for Mondays at Collegian.com. Have a wonderful evening.